Hey guys, in today's video, I wanna show you how to build a very simple static site generator using Python and the libraries Markdown 2 and Jinja 2. So the reason why I'm making this video is because this morning I made this very simple static site generator for my site because I wanna write more articles for my site. So here's an example of one. This is the first one I have on my site. I've written for other sites, but not my own. So this is the first one on my own. And what I wanna do is I just wanna have a way to generate these pages automatically. So it's basically like a layout and then I have the actual article text here in the middle, which is generated from Markdown. So we can go ahead and build this quickly in this video. You'll see how simple it can actually be. So I'll start up a terminal and then I'll create a, a virtual environment. So DNV, and then I'll go ahead and activate it. And then I want to install both Jinja 2 and Markdown 2. So those should be quick to install. Okay, and now I'll have like a script. So this is where I'll write uh, most of the main code. It's going to be pretty simple. So inside of script. And then I also have a markdown file. So I'll just call this article.md. So this is where the markdown would be. And then I'll have uh, a layout file. So layout.html. Okay, so First, let me write some markdown. So I actually have the uh, site directory here. This is for at the end where I need to load in all the CSS and images. But for now, I'll just use the layout in a really simple way. So markdown is pretty simple. If you're not familiar with it, it's just a shorthand way of writing things that will be eventually generated into HTML. So for example, if you want to write an H1 tag, you would have the hash, and then you would say, um, this is the uh, title. Then you can just start writing for a paragraph. So this is a paragraph of text. And you can do a lot more stuff, but since this is a tutorial on building the static site generator, I won't go into markdown here. But this is very simple markdown that I have here. So next I'll create a very simple layout file. So this is going to be the HTML that my uh, HTML generated from the markdown file will be injected into. So I'll do something like this. So I'll say, um, hello, and then I'll have a variable for the uh, article here. And this is Jinja 2, so if you're familiar with Flask or maybe even Django, you have probably used Jinja 2 already, so it's gonna be used in a very similar way. So I'll go to the script, and the first thing I need to do are the imports, so I'll be using uh, Markdown 2. So from Markdown 2, I want to import Markdown. So this will convert my Markdown file to HTML. Uh, from Jinja2, I want to import environment and file system loader. So this is just to take in my layout file and then inject everything into it and then create a final output HTML. And then I'll also be using uh, JSON. So uh, from JSON import load. Okay, so the first thing I need to do is I need to bring in that layout file with uh, Jinja. So I'll say a template environment is going to be equal to environment. And then the loader is going to be the file system loader. So all this is doing, so search path, uh, the current directory. So all this is doing is it's specifying how you're gonna load the template. So with the file system loader, I'm just saying that I wanna load it directly from the file system in the current directory. And then uh, the environment is what Jinja uses to control everything. So I have this object here. And what I can do is I can say template is equal to a template environment dot get template and then layout dot HTML. So because I'm using the file system loader, I just pass in the file to get template and it adds it into this object template here. So what I can do is I can uh, output this. So I'll say with open and I'll name this uh, index dot HTML as output file. Uh, what I want to do is I want to write to that. So output file dot write, and then I'll use template dot render. And then with render, I just pass in the variables in the template. So here I just have one article. So I'll pass in article and I'll say, um, this is the article text. All right. So let's try running the script to see if we can view the index file and we can't so this should be opened for writing not reading so just add the w there and now we have the index.html that gets uh, generated so we can go ahead and open it 
and we see hello and then this is the article text so everything is generating properly and of course if i uh, change this to something else uh, here is more text and then uh, run it again we see the more text there and if i change the layouts from hello to let's say hello there and then run the script then we see hello there so now what I want to do is I want to take the contents of the markdown file and I want to convert them to HTML and then put them inside of the layout. So what I can do here is I can open up the markdown file. So with uh, open markdown.md and we'll say as markdown file. Uh, what I want to do is I want to say uh, article is going to be equal to markdown and I can load in the contents with markdown file.read. So Markdown just takes some Markdown text and because I'm using a file, I'm just going to read it in here and pass it to Markdown. And this will convert the Markdown here into HTML. And then I can take this here, which is now HTML, and I can pass it to render. So let's go ahead and try that. And we see uh, no such file or directory. Um, I'm using article.md, not markdown.md. Okay, so I just ran it. And now let's see how it changes. We see this is the title and this is a paragraph of text. So if we go inside of the markdown file, that's exactly what we have here. So I can write another paragraph here and then generate it again, refresh, and we see the new paragraph. So now it's loading in the contents of the uh, markdown file. And inside of here, I can also write code. So like if I want to write Python, I can say, uh, Let's say my function and then return hello and then just have triple back ticks to in the code block and then run this again and then I see the code here but it's not formatted correctly so I need to pass some options to markdown so markdown takes uh, extras and the two extras that I need for this are fenced code blocks and I believe uh, code friendly and let's generate that again. And I need the comma. So let's generate that. And then we see the code looks a lot better. So the last thing I did for my site is I had a configuration file so I can just edit this for each article. So what I'll do is I'll create something called config.json. And in here, I'll put things like the... Uh, the title, I'll put the code link, and there are some other things, but I'll use these two for now just to demonstrate, or really just the title just to demonstrate. So this is just a really plain uh, JSON object. So I need a comma here. I'll put a space there, and I'll put a space there as well. Now I like the space closer. Okay, so this is the title of the article. So what I want to do in the script is I want to uh, load in the configuration for the article as well. So I'll open that up. So config.json uh, as config file. And then what I'll do is I'll load that. So I'll say config is load uh, config file. And now what I want to do is I want to pass some of that config to the template. So uh, we'll say this is where the title is going to go. So title. And then in the scripts, I need to pass in the title. So title equals uh, config title. Okay, so let's try running that. Uh, I'm missing a comma. And we see the title of the article is here and the rest of the text is there. So that's basically everything that I needed to do for this. So obviously the layout is going to be different and the article is going to be different. So what I'll do is I'll bring those in. So first let me bring in the article that I'm actually using. So I'll just uh, overwrite this. So we see it's a lot longer. It has uh, more code, it has images and other stuff and lists. And then I'll also bring in the layout that I'm using. So this is the actual layout that I'm using.
So what I'll do is I'll search for the values that I need. So I need a description and an author along with the title. So I'll add that here. Uh, description, author, the title is already there. Uh, let me search for the curly braces. So description, author, title, uh, title again, code, link, article, and URL and identifier. Okay, so URL. And identifier. So I won't use all of these, but you'll see how uh, easy this is from just configuring this. So for the code link, I'll use github.com. For description, I'll say my article. And for the author, I'll just say Anthony. So that's a configuration that I want. And I just need to pass those configuration values to render again. So I have the title, um, I have the article. Let's just do the rest. So description, uh, we have author, we have code link, identifier, and what else? Uh, URL. And I think that's it. So let's go ahead and add those. So copy from there. And then I'll just uh, update these. So I forgot the equal sign here and here, but identifier, code link, author, and description. Okay, so now if we run the script again, and then we refresh, we see we get much more, but now the formatting isn't correct. There's no CSS being loaded. So I just need to put this in my site directory. So it's gonna be site uh, slash uh, tutorials, and then slash the name of the file. So now if I open that up, go to sites and then tutorials, index, now we see it looks like my site. So we have the title of the article here. We have a link to GitHub here. Uh, we see the actual article text. And then uh, we don't have the comments working correctly, but if I put the values in for the comments, that would work. And I'd have to put it on my domain as well. But that's basically the main part of the static site generator. Well, it's basically all of it. So anything that I wanna change, like the title, we'll say, uh, Flask article, and then I'll run the script again and refresh the page and we see Flask article. Uh, if I wanna change the code link, instead of GitHub, I can say bit bucket, run this again and refresh. And we see it loads bit bucket instead of GitHub. So that's what I built this morning, I'll probably add on to it later, but I just want to show you guys that, especially since I haven't created a video in a while. So I'll include the link to this in the description below. If you have any questions about this, feel free to ask in the comments. Uh, if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel already, please subscribe. So thank you for watching and I will talk to you next time.